Here we have the Singer 766 sewing machine from around about 1971, judging by the uh, the manual. So uh, let's take a wee look at this beastie here. You can see the label on the top there, sort of a gold background with the black Singer brand name and a bobbin there. Now the bobbin is quite different, or the winding of the bobbin is quite different in these machines. There's a wee close up of the Singer logo on the front of the case. The case is latched on with these latches on the side here. You just pull the latch out on both sides and lift. I'll just show you in the inside the case here. There is a compartment for uh, the foot controller and cable and there's actually a position here for the manual so the the spine of the manual sits down on these and these little latches here and clips in to um, this, under this little clip here probably one of the biggest selling features for this type of machine was the um, what they call the slantomatic the slantomatic uh, is where the, they designed it so that uh, the needle bar was actually slanted back and that gives you better access um, you know viewing access uh, to this area here the sewing area and um, that was that was quite a big selling feature for um, this this series the 700 series I've also got a, a 726 singer as well the same uh, same setup and there were earlier models as well that had the slantomatic. But there in behind here you can see the needle bar and you can see that it's on an angle there along with the presser foot bar. So that was just for um, ease of accessibility really and makes it easy to see. This particular model has a um, cloth plate that can be removed. Some people might call that a flatbed. You push a button at the back here and that just slides off and that's got a piece there that hinges up for storage it clips on and there now we have a free arm here and you'll also notice that there's a stabilizer leg out the side or out the back here so um, the other main feature with these machines is what they're called in place bobbin winding now I won't demonstrate that right now. Um, I'll make a separate video on bobbin winding for this machine. So I'll uh, put a link up here somewhere to that video. Um, but um, in a nutshell, basically there is no separate bobbin winder with this machine. The bobbin winding's done in place. So you um, leave the needle threaded and then you pull this uh, back here and then engage the bobbin winding mechanism and it actually winds the bobbin uh, whilst the needle's threaded and when you finish winding the bobbin you push the plate in which disengages this little lever and then you um, get your two thread or it's actually still one thread the bobbin thread and the needle thread are one at this stage just grab that thread and cut it and you're ready to go uh, so very very nice uh, design there so that was a um, big selling feature for this model. So one other feature of this model is that it could do chain stitching. So you thread through um, this loop here when you're doing chain stitching. And I think you replace a plate. You put a different uh, throat plate on here. I'll demonstrate that too in a later video. The other nice feature with this one is snap-on feet, which probably seems quite common now but um, you know back in the day that was quite a neat feature so you know just clip on feet and also this is what they call the soft touch fabric feed so if we take a close look we'll see that there are no actual feed dog teeth no feed teeth there that is a rubber coating so it's got a certain amount of grip to it. So that is um, 
to protect you know f uh, finer weight fabrics you know shear fabrics and whatnot so it wouldn't damage them with the teeth and um, that that's worked out quite well I think um, most of these seem to have survived I've seen the odd one where the the rubber coating or I'm not sure if that's rubber or not um, but the co the coating here feels like rubber um, has come off and you know deteriorated but most of these ones have survived quite well so seems to work pretty well the other handy feature was um, no screws required to remove the throat plates so you could just get your thumb under there and pull up and off it comes and that is held on by these two posts here which have got magnets around them so it magnetizes the plate down into position so that was quite handy just for getting in there and you know cleaning in between the uh, feed dogs there to get lint out and whatnot that was another handy feature another feature that is mentioned in the manual is the um, one-way needle clamp now I often see needles inserted back to front uh, when machines come in for repair or service the needles are often in back to front with the flat facing the operator which is completely wrong and um, it's common a common problem now the manual says you cannot get the needle in back to front and if I loosen that a lot which is what some people do to try and get the needle in backwards not that they're intentionally doing it it's just yeah that definitely yeah that definitely won't go in back to front so that's a great feature I wonder why they didn't sort of carry that through to modern machines another feature is what Singer actually trademarked as touch and sew and from what I gather it's these dials here so um, you know for selecting your pattern stitches push that in to rotate and select and you've got your needle uh, your width zigzag width and also your needle positioning here and buttonhole selection there and down here you've got your stitch length and reverse there so this here is buttonhole balancing and you've got your main on off switch there you've got minimum speed maximum speed and also your thread tension here and in behind this plate here you've got your um, presser foot pressure so you've got a lower pressure here right back down to darning which is no or hardly any pressure normal extra pressure and then maximum pressure on the foot on the presser foot and also a handy uh, threading guide inside the base plate there uh, around this side here we've got a um, standard hand wheel there and also here a um, the socket for the plug so we've got the 220 volt version um, 80 watt motor 20 watt light bulb and the, this symbol here the two squares uh, one inside the other just refers to uh, the machine's double insulated so um, you wouldn't earth this machine if um, you know you're doing any electrical work or modifications you don't earth them the other feature that Singer was uh, fairly famous for was the horizontal bob, um, spool holders. So this is what they call the friction free spool holder. With the spool lying horizontally like this, the thread would come off um, you know, without friction. It doesn't have to, as with the vertical um, systems, it doesn't have to uh, pull the thread off the spool, therefore turning the entire spool. So the lights of that there, we can like that, and that's the friction free, which is absolutely no 
friction on there whatsoever. So with a um, vertical type system of uh, you know spool holder, when the machine's actually pulling the thread off the spool, it's, it's actually got to um, you know pull the weight of the spool around, and that can add a little bit of tension. And this top lid here folds back. Uh, that this gives you access to the button holding cam mechanism and also just a little bit of extra information here on the what they call the flexi stitches so they are stretch type stitches um, so this the, the knob here is referring to this knob here and these dials here you set you know appropriately to you know green here for these ones and yellow there for the yellow ones here and also on the inside of the cover there it gives you a diagram of the bobbin winding procedure and also a button holding just sort of like a quick start guide really showing you what settings to set there so the supplied accessory box comes with a ruler there for uh, button holding measuring so that plate there will be the chain stitching plate I'll show that in another video uh, there's a little brush that is the free motion uh, darning foot for you know uh, free motion sewing embroidery and darning and you use this plate here in conjunction with it it's a raised plate so it's similar to a drop feed you just uh, put that in position and that uh, masks the feed dogs off so they don't feed and uh, this be a bobbin zip foot straight stitching foot use that in conjunction with the straight stitching plate and um, vertical spool holder there for if you want to do twin needling a couple of spool pin holders I think this is for um, blind hemming I'll check the manual a buttonhole foot and a, a satin stitching or um, stretch stitch type foot which has a little bit of clearance on the back uh, behind the needle there to allow the satin stitching to pass through nice and smoothly and um, a uh, seam width guide screws onto the bed plate there and uh, adjustable guide so I'll show some of that in um, another video where I go through the operation of the machine um, just want to try and keep some of these videos a little bit shorter and maybe break them up a little bit into um, a more targeted sort of subject matter so that's the accessories so there we go with a uh, quick overview of the Singer 766 um, as I say I've got a 726 and um, I'll be doing some videos uh, showing that demonstrating things like threading and general operation so um, thanks very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed that video